I'm Kelly Harrell, author, modern animist, and creator of The Weekly Rune. Soul Intent Arts is my soul-tending practice, and you're listening to What in the Weird, my podcast in which I talk about runes, animism, soul-tending, and how each of those intersects through sacred activism on my path. The Weekly Rune is out, and if you're not sure what it is, It's a rune cast that I've done for years focused on the runic calendar and the current half-month rune. You can find the archive of all of the rune casts on my site, soulintentarts.com. And if you're not sure what a half-month is, listen to the early episodes of What in the Weird or just go read the weekly rune at Soul Intent Arts. It's explained at the beginning of every rune cast. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters who make the sharing of my rune work through the RuneCast and this podcast possible with their financial support. If you'd like to support the Weekly Rune, you get access to the full RuneCast, no ads, more details on the RuneCast, weekly prompts for engaging the half-month rune in your personal work, and a Galder recording for how to work with the Weekly RuneCast through chanting. You can contribute as little or as much as you'd like, and the rewards scale according to what you'd like to receive. And if you don't want any rewards, you just want to show your support, you're welcome to do that. Go to patreon.com and search for The Weekly Rune. You can also subscribe to the free version of The Weekly Rune by going to soulintentarts.com. And thank you so much for doing that. Don't forget that if you want to receive the Winter Solstice RuneCast, sign up for the Satherkin tier at Patreon. It's coming out this week. By now, everybody knows we're firmly in Yera, the rune that means year and gave us the root for the word year. My take on Yera is hearth accounting, literally the act of assessing how things went for the year, what worked, what didn't, and in realizing those two bits of information, what we should do again, what we should never do again, the skills we're missing, and figuring out how to get them. Yara is lining up the dominoes to plan the pattern of how they'll fall. It's not testing them out. It's not analyzing with scrutiny where every domino will go and staying up all night to make the pattern precise. It's planning. That's all. That's all. One of the things I talk about in my book, Runic Book of Days, is how the mechanics of the way we track time have changed. And they don't match up with ancient methods of timekeeping. They can't. It's not possible for them to. Moreover, the sun's tracking and planet wobble influence the way we track the days and our perception of time passage based on our earthly vantage point of the stars, of the star map. According to timekeeping methods of ancient calendars of Western and Northern Europe, including lunar ones, not just solar, we would now be in the 13th month, where Samhain, Alphasblot, Winter's Night, ends the year, Yule and Winter Solstice begin it. Between those, there's a gap. There's an experience of untime. It's an emptiness that's intended to be open. It's intended not to be filled or even in some ways denoted. We carry our awareness to it. We hold that time period and our awareness open. I don't think our modern brains, schedules, and sense of time tracking can fully appreciate what that held open experience of a nothingness meant to our ancestors or what it could mean for us. But Yera does. If you want to refract Yera down to a very clear spiritual term, and I know you do, Yera is about holding space. It's not about doing anything, but about assessing what happened planning how the next cycle could go. How often in life do you get that? The space to just examine things, to observe and listen. No doing 
is required at this time. You're not required to act on the results of that examination. No overt action or big expansive gestures at this time. How often do you get to plan what you do rather than act out of rote patterning or from a mad dash to just meet certain life objectives like show up to work on time, make sure the bills are paid, the household is fed, taken care of, etc.? How often do you have the opportunity to just hold that kind of space in your life, one where you can just lightly observe? And do you know how to make such a space in your life, that kind of openness? What boundaries would you have to set with yourself? Maybe no social media for a little while, no TV, maybe a little seclusion. What boundaries would you have to set with other people, with your relationships? If the door shut, don't knock. I need an hour. I need a weekend. What skills might you need to organize your thoughts, your process? And what skills do you need to learn to figure out what skills you need? We just make assumptions that these things are obvious, that when, you know, when we look around at emptiness, that we know what to do with it rather than just start shoving stuff in it, right? To just try to fill it back up because emptiness is stressful in a modern psyche. But some of us really don't know how to create and hold that kind of space because we've never had the opportunity to. We've never had the option. Those are the personal notes on Yera and holding space. Let's talk about the collective ones. I'm going to lay down a really heavy viewpoint on our ability to hold space effectively. And that is, Yera is a very anti-patriarchy. It's anti-oppression. Why, why, why is she saying that? Where is she going with this? Oppression doesn't want you to plan. It doesn't want you to think, be educated, or process. It doesn't want you to creatively solve problems. It doesn't want you to be calm, collected, confident, or responsive. It wants you to be reactive. It wants you to be stressed and to be afraid of emptiness and fill in openness with whatever it takes to just keep from feeling that openness. And the best way for oppression or patriarchy to get you to not be able to do those calming things that you need to hold that openness is to not give you time or space to do them, to not give you the ability to hold space for whatever your purposes are, to sort of keep you in a mad rush, literally, through the rigors of full-time employment, through a lack of emphasis on the personal, through a lack of not giving people equal access to downtime. I mean, literally, maternity care, paternity care, leave, vacation. Through illness, through lack of resources, and even space itself. If you start to think about the collective reasons for why you can't take time, downtime, there really are oppressive aspects to it that are collective. They're not about your inability to organize. They're not about your inability to set boundaries and prioritize yourself. I mean, sure, we can all use a brush up on all of that at any given time. But there are bigger factors involved in holding space effectively at a collective level. This is why I say that your spiritual work is sacred activism. Any and everything that you do to reclaim your space, your solitude, your focus, and your well-being, they are acts of sacred justice. Yes, the actual healing that you do to end generational trauma, to heal ancestral lines, to clear them, to resolve soul loss and post-traumatic stress. Yes, those things are obvious sacred activism, right? Because through them, you heal the past, you change the present and become more active in creating the future as a better space for all of us. That is weird weaving at its greatest. But it's the quieter, 
more muted space that you hold, as with Yara, the planning, the openness to listen and observe and not just hurriedly feel, fill yourself up with stuff so that you can keep up the pace and not miss anything, that's about your solitude. It's about your focused awareness on how you spend your time and energy. Your intentionally created self is sacred activism. It's Yara. Remember, if Yara has a motto, it's that shit don't fix itself. How can you do that better? You learn the ways that you can hold space better So that in that space, you can weave your weird the way you want to, the way we all need you to. That's it for this episode. If you have questions or insights about working the runes in season, or you just need a cheerleader, feel free to email me at kelly at solentonarts.com. Or you can call in through the Anchor app, which is how I record What in the Weird, and you can download Anchor on Android or iPhone. Also, check out earlier episodes by downloading them from Google Play or iTunes and all those other platforms for podcasts. If you get a chance, check out Everyday Animism, which I co-host with a couple of other lovely ladies, Brandis Schnabel and Janet Roper, which is also on Anchor. And other podcasts you may enjoy are Around Grandfather Fire, hosted by James Stovall and Sarah Odinson, and Why Shamanism Now, hosted by Christina Pratt. You can learn more about me and my work by visiting solentonarts.com, and I'm most active on social media at Instagram at Kelly Soul Arts. I'm Kelly, and this has been What in the Weird.